Our main objective for this lesson is to represent a rational function through its equation, table of values, and graph. As a bonus, I am also going to discuss how to transform graphs of rational functions. Let's have a quick activity. Let us identify the following function. This is a cubic function. This one is a logarithmic function. This is a linear function. This one is a trigonometric function. While this one is a quadratic function. And the last but not the least is the rational function. Today's discussion will focus on the rational function. You have learned that a rational function is a function of the form f of x is equal to p of x over q of x, where p of x and q of x are polynomial functions and q of x is not equal to zero. Here are some examples. We have the name of the function here, an equal sign, and a polynomial divided by a polynomial where the denominator is not equal to zero. Probably the simplest rational function is f of x equals one over x. Remember that in a function, there is an independent variable and the dependent variable. The dependent variable relies only on the value of the independent variable. Let us create a table for this. In assigning values for independent variable, I suggest that you should have negative values, zero, and positive values. All you have to do is to substitute each value of x in our equation. So in this case, this would be 1 divided by negative 4. So we have negative 1 fourth. Next one, let us substitute negative 3 here. So this will become 1 divided by negative 3. Next one is negative 2. So this is 1 divided by negative 2. Then we have negative 1 here. 1 divided by negative 1 is negative 1. Let us substitute 0 in our denominator. 1 divided by 0 will become undefined. Let us substitute 1 here. 1 divided by 1 is 1. Substituting 2, 1 divided by 2 or 1 half. Let us substitute 3, 1 divided by 3 or 1 third. And let us substitute 4, 1 divided by 4 is 1 fourth. This time, let us represent our function through a graph. Let's have our Cartesian plane. All we have to do is to plot the points that we have here. If our x is negative 4, our f of x or y is negative 1 fourth. So here is negative 4, and then negative 1 fourth is somewhere here. And then we have negative 3 for x, and negative 1 third for f of x, somewhere here. Then we have negative 2 for x, and negative 1 half, right at the middle of 0 and negative 1. Then we have negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. If our x is 0, the value of the function is undefined, meaning we do not have graph at x equals 0. Let me graph a vertical dashed line here. This is called asymptote. You will learn more about this in our succeeding lessons. Then we have here 1, 1, x is 1, y is 1. If our x is 2, our y is 1 half at the middle of 0 and 1. If our x is 3, then our y is 1 third somewhere here. And if our x is 4, our y is 1 fourth somewhere here. Now let us graph this. This one is approaching this blue vertical line here, the asymptote. And this one is also approaching this blue vertical line here going down. So now we were able to represent our function through an equation, table of values, and a graph. A function is used to model or represent real-life situation. To give you an example, 
the current world record as of October 2015 for the 100-meter dash is 9.58 seconds set by the Jamaican Usain Bolt in 2009. Let us represent the speed of a runner as a function of the time it takes to run 100 meters in the track. Name the function s and the variable t. The name of the function is s and the variable is t, so we have s of t. s here represents the speed, and we have learned from physics that speed is distance over time. The distance is already given, it is 100, and the time is the variable t. So we have s of t is equal to 100 divided by t. Now let us create a table for this. You might ask me why I do not have negative values for t for the independent variable. It is because we do not have negative seconds of time. We only have positive values for the time. So again, we just have to substitute our t in the equation. So 100 divided by the first value of t, which is 10, 100 divided by 10 is equal to 10. Then we have 100 divided by 12 is equal to 8.33. 100 divided by 14 is 7.14. 100 divided by 16 is 6.25. 100 divided by 18 is 5.36. And 100 divided by 20 is 5. Next, let us graph this table. Let us recall our function and the table. T here, again, is our independent variable, and it is plotted along the x-axis, while S of t is our dependent variable, and it is plotted along the y-axis. Let us start. If t is 10, our S of t is also 10, so we have our point here. If our t is 12, our S of t is 8.33, somewhere here. If our t is 14, our s of t is 7.14, somewhere here. If our t is 16, our s of t is 6.25, somewhere here. If our t is 18, our s of t is 5.56. And if our t is 20, our s of t is equal to 5. Now let us connect these points. So again, we were able to represent our function through an equation, table of values, and a graph. As a bonus, like what I've said earlier, allow me to discuss how to transform rational functions. For better understanding, please watch my video on kinds of functions and its transformation. We have learned that this graph is f of x equals 1 over x. Our horizontal asymptote here is y equals 0. Now, what if we have p of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2? The only difference of these two is the additional plus 2 here. This graph will now move two units up. So this horizontal asymptote y equals 0 will also move. This is now y equals positive 2. Now, what if we have q of x is equal to 1 over x minus 2? So again, the only difference here, this time, is negative 2. So the original function will now move two units down. So this horizontal asymptote will also move two units down. The equation of this asymptote now is y equals negative 2. Now try this. Again, this is f of x is equal to 1 over x. This time, I want you to focus on the vertical asymptote. The equation of this asymptote is x equals 0. What if I have p of x is equal to 1 over x plus 2? The only difference of these two is the positive 2 here in the denominator. If this is the case, our matter function will now move going to the left. 
by how many units? By 2 units. So this vertical asymptote will also move 2 units going to the left. And the equation of this will become x equals negative 2. Now, what if I have q of x is equal to 1 divided by x minus 2? This time, I have minus 2 added in the denominator. The original function now will move 2 units going to the right. So, this vertical asymptote will also move 2 units going to the right. The equation of this asymptote will now become x equals 2. Let's have another rational function. We already know the graph of f of x equals 1 over x. What if we have p of x equals 1 over x squared? So notice the difference. We have here the exponent 2. If that is the case, it means we will not have a negative denominator because a negative number raised to an even exponent will just become positive. So it means we do not have graph down here. This graph down here will flip on the x-axis. So it will now become here on top. So the graph of 1 over x squared looks like this. Let us transform this graph. What if I have this graph? What will be the equation of this graph? The only difference, it moved 2 units up. Let me use another name for the function for this graph. So the graph moved two units up. So the mother function will have plus two at the right. So I have v of x equals one over x squared plus two. Now, what if I have a graph like this? From the mother function, you will see that the graph moved two units to the right. So the changes in our equation will occur in our denominator. Again, let me use another name for this function. It will become 1 over x minus 2 quantity squared. Remember that if you have minus 2 in the denominator, the graph moves to the right. By how many units? By 2 units. Now, what if we have a graph like this? So the graph move up and also to the left. How many units did it move upward? One, two, three. Then how many units it moved to the left? From here, one, two. Let me use another name for this graph. The name will be t of x is equal to one over x plus two quantity squared plus 3 since it moved 3 units up. For the summary, I hope you have learned how to represent rational function through its equation, table of values, and graph. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. We are asked to complete the table and then graph the function. So let us substitute negative 1 here. Negative 1 plus 3 will give us 2. Negative 1 minus 3 will give us negative 4. 2 over negative 4 will give us negative 1 half. Let us substitute 0 here. 0 plus 3 is 3. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. Let us substitute 1 here. 1 plus 3 is 4. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Let us substitute 2 here. 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. 5 divided by negative 1 is negative 5. Let us substitute 3 here. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 minus 3 is 0. So if our x is 3, our denominator will become 0, and a number divided by 0 is undefined. Next, let us substitute 4 here. 4 plus 3 is 7. 4 minus 3 is 1. 7 over 1 is 7. Let us substitute 5. 5 plus 3 is 8. 5 minus 3 is 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. And let us substitute 6. 
6 plus 3 is 9. 6 minus 3 is 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now that we have completed the table, let us graph. If our x is negative 1, our y is negative 1 half, so somewhere here. If our x is 0, our y is negative 1. If our x is 1, our y is negative 2. If our x is 2, our y is negative 5. If our x is 3, then we have undefined, meaning we do not have graph at x equals 3. Allow me to create a vertical dash line. If our x is 4, our y is equal to 7, somewhere here. If our x is 5, our y is equal to 4. And if our x is 6, our y is equal to 3. Now let us connect the points. So this graph is approaching this asymptote, and this graph is also approaching this asymptote. Gets? Our next lesson is Domain and Range of Rational Functions.